Hello friends and welcome back. In this Angular video, I'm going to show you how to make these reusable and validated input components. And I will be showing you step by step on how to implement that. But before we proceed to any other thing, let me show you how this is going to be working. As you are looking on here, I'm having this simple login form with the email and the password. And as long as I touch them and I leave them, they will be providing this invalid feedback alongside with the validation messages that will tell us exactly what we need to provide into these fields for example if i input the email like uh, the correct email address will be, we will be seeing that there will be this check mark that indicate that this is now validated and same for the password if i input the short password that is not at least eight characters long we will see there will be this validation message and i can go ahead and pass that by passing in what i am required to pass and hence the login button will be now enabled this is the behavior that we're going to be uh, doing in this video i would like to to show you the steps on how to achieve this and i want you to follow along to see on how this is done without further ado let's go ahead and see on how to implement this one all right i'm going to start up by closing this that we were previously using during the demonstration i will provide this boilerplate in the description you can check the link and it will guide you through this page on where you can get this um, uh, demo or this boilerplate that you may start from or you can visit my github that is the username and you can you can see all of this so whenever you go to code and i, I try to copy this to the clipboard i'm going to go into my uh, folder or my file manager and i'm going to open the cmd in here i'm going to go ahead and type git clone and i'm going to pass in that link and press enter in this case it's going to get a copy of that code and it will bring them to my machine and once i i'm done cloning i'm going to create the screen and i'm going to say cd and i'm going to pass this name and i'm going to go into this particular folder and while i am in here i'm going to say code and i'm going to press the dot so as to be able to open the vs code and this particular path and this is how now it is going to be opened looking like and you will be having the same. And before we do anything more, we have to install the packages. And the way this work is, go is to go into the terminal. And where I'm in the terminal, I'm going to say npm install and wait until the dependencies are being installed. All right. And once all the dependencies are uh, currently uh, installed, I'm going to say ng uh, serve to see on what you're going to be starting with. And I'm going to go back to the, my browser and I'm going to go ahead and say localhost and I'm going to see this is what you're going to be having to start with so as to be able to save some amount of time. I'm not going to create any project or whatsoever, but as I provided you this boilerplate, I can show you on what you're going to be starting with. Starting from this uh, first structure, I am having this simple form. That's the one that we were previewing on our browser and it is having this input and there is this one for the email and there's the second one. The one for password and there is, there's this form group and the, uh, the form group that we'll be, be having here is the login form and once we go into this uh, we can see that i'm having this uh, login form with the validators in here and this will be the one that help us to validate and there will be these imports that we uh, imported into the project so as to be able to use the behavior from the reactive modules and other things Okay, so while you, we, are, we are here, we are going to try to minimize this and make it as simple and as short as possible so as to be able to save amount of code to write. And we can be using the reusable component for input whenever we want to input the password, the email, or any other thing that we may be needing to input. To start up, I'm going to, uh, to be closing this and I'm going to go into my app. And as I'm going to be uh, using this as a shared, I'm going to create a new folder and call this as shared. I'm going to be do, do right click new folder. I'm going to call this as a shared folder. And inside this shared folder, I'm going to create another one and I'm going to call this as a components because uh, this is the descriptive name that we may be using for the components. And inside these components, I'm going to open it into the integrated terminal. And where I am in this path, I'm going to create the component that is going to be uh, reusable and that's the one that is going to be containing our logic for the validation. I'm going to say NGG and I'm going to say com C for component. I'm going to say, I'm going to call this as input and I'm going to be skipping the test because I don't want to, to create the test file like this one and I press enter. In this case, it's going to create this text input component and this component is the one that we're going to be using. So I'm going to create to create the terminal and close this tab 
And inside this text input component, we're going to start by adding what we, we were having in this app.component.html. But for this, we are not going to be um, copying the password. As I'm going to be using one component, I'm going to delete this. And the thing that I'm going to be uh, picking up is this. And we will be remaining with nothing in here. And we will be using the shared component. So I'm going to paste it in here. And once I paste it in here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove the previous behavior for the type because we're going to be using it as a dynamic for the label. And I'm going to delete the email, we delete the, um, the form control name as well as the form control name. We're going to be, we are going to see on how we are going to use the control and press holder. I'm going to remove it because we're going to be having it as a dynamic and the same with here and in this case we are having these as now a template that will be used whenever we want and we pass in some of the parameters that we are going to be seeing in a bit and once we are done removing this uh, past behavior we're going to go into this and we're going to add the input that will be the one to provide with this text input uh, component during the time of use and in this case i'm going to provide the input i'm going to say at input uh input here it is, it is going to auto import it. And the first input that we're going to be inputting is the type. And I'm going to give this a uh, default value as a text. Whenever we don't pass in the type, it is going to be a text. And I'm going to copy this so as to be able to save some time and I'm going to paste it two times. And I'm going to be needing the label. And in this case, I'm going to leave this as empty and we'll be needing to pass in the press holder. And instead of get, giving it text, I'm going to give it the initial value of empty. And once we are done adding this input, we can go back to our text input component and try to replace that. And I'm going to pass in now here the type that will be inputting. And I'm going to pass in the press holder. And I'm going to pass in the label in here and label. And the same for here, I'm going to pass in the label like this one. All right. And once we are done doing this, it's now time to go and add the constructor and add the ng control into our text.input.component.ts. So while I am in here, I'm going to go ahead and create a constructor. So I'm going to say constructor and I'm going to pass in the self. And after passing the self, I'm going to uh, let me put some bracket and I'm going to say public. And I'm going to say control there. And this is going to be a type of ng control. And here we go. Once we are done with this, we're going to, uh, to, to create the control method. And the way we do that, this is going to be a getter. So I'm going to say control. And I'm going to say that this is going to be a type of form control. It is going to auto import itself. And inside here, I'm going to be saying that return. And it's going to say this dot control deal. This one. And I'm going to say control. And I want to say as form control, like this one. All right. And once we are done with this, we're going to add the parameters for right value for the register on change and for the register on touched. I'm going to say right um, value. And this is going to be object. And I'm going to say that it's going to take a type of any. And I'm going to say void, like this one. And I don't, we're going to do the same for uh, register on change. And I'm going to pass in the function, which will be the type of any. And I'm going to say void, like this one. And I'm going to say um, register untouched. And the same is going to take this as any. And I'm going to uh, pass in the void, like this one. And once we are done with this, we're going to go back to the constructor to, to initialize this control deal and to set the value accessor. So I'm going to say this dot control deal. And I'm going to say value accessor. Uh, value accessor and I'm going to say that this is going to be this all right and once we are done with this we're going to go back into our text.input.html uh, into this template and you're going to add the parameters for the ng class so as to be able to to know if we touched the input and you didn't provide anything or we meet the requirements so as to be it's going to be able to add the class that we are going to be specifying in here so i'm going to go here i'm going to press enter and i'm going to say ng class and i'm going to be saying that this is going to be equal to control dot touched 
and we're going to be using the ternary operator in here so i'm going to say that control dot invariant and i'm going to say that i'm going to be passing the class of is uh, invariant and if it is going to be valid or going to be passing this as is valid and we, when we don't do anything i'm going to be saying that this is going to be an R. And you can see that this is complaining and you can see that it is not a known property of input. And inside here, I'm going to import the common module. And I hope the error is going to go away and we'll be having this like this one. Okay, try to reformat it so as to be able to make them look realistic. And I'm going to try to bring this up so as to be able to have it like this one. And after we are done with this, we're going to be adding also the form control. So I'm going to say form control. And this is going to be having the value of control, like this one. And if you see, this is now complaining again, we're going to go ahead and input the, uh, the reactive forms module, like this one. And you can see now the error now has gone away. And once we are done with all of that, it's now time to add the validators. And the validators that we're going to be adding is these two ones. And I'm going to add the other one for checking if now our password meets the requirement. So where I am in here, I'm going to use the if conditions. And I'm going to first to check if, I'm going to say if, and I'm going to say control, and we're going to check for the errors that may be on there. And I'm going to go inside and see the errors that may be uh, occurring in there. So I'm going to say required, for example. And if we get this particular error, we're going to be passing something in here. So I'm going to copy, to, put, to cut this and paste it in here, like this one. And I'm going to check the second one if um, now we have errors for, for example, if we have the errors for uh, email, and we are going to to say that if we are having the error of email, we are going now to provide this one. Don't mind the errors; we are going to resolve them in a minute. And you can see that it is it is now complaining that when we put the cursor in here, you can see that now it is going to say it say that it, is, it must be accessed with that one. But when we put the optional chaining in here. It is going to go away and we are safe now. And despite the required uh, parameter or the required requirement in the email, we have to put the, uh, the password validation message. So I'm going to copy this and paste it in here. And the particular error that we're going to be checking is now the mean length, like this one. And whenever we have this particular um, uh, error, we're going to say that um, password, password, must be at least eight characters long, all right? And once we are done with this, it's now time to go and check the usage on how we can use this input component and see if now the validation are being now uh, checked before we do anything or we submit anything to the database. So I'm going to go uh, into my app.components.html and try to bring up the app.text.input.component uh, and see if now this is going to work. Inside here I'm going to say app text input. Here it is. And I'm going to press enter. I'm going to make it like this one and Inside here, I'm going to press enter so as to be able to add some of the parameters that we may need. First of all, we need to provide the label and the label, the first one is going to be email. And the, f the second one, we need to provide the form control. Um, form control. And in this case, the form control that we, do, uh, we are going to be having, I'm going to say login form dot con, uh, dot controls. And I'm going to access the value of email because we have it in our form definition. And again, you're going to provide the press holder and press holder that we are going to be having, for example, is going to say enter your email. And again, you're going to be having again the type. And in this case, as we're going to be providing the email, I'm going to give the data type of email. And um, let me check where I have a problem. Email like this one, okay? 
So whenever we go back into our browser and check, you can see that I'm having this email and whenever I, I touch in, you can see that there, there will be this brief, please provide. I can see you forgot to input this one. So let me go back and I'm going to say please provide and I'm going to be passing the label in here because that is the thing that we are going to be shown. So whenever we go back and check, whenever we click, can say pro please provide email good so i'm going to go back and i'm going to do the same for password so i'm going to go back in here and i may use this and i'm going to paste it here and i can say that this is going to be a password and i'm going to say that this is going to be a password and enter your password and type is going to be a password as well and that's it I'm going to remove the extra spaces in here and try to go back to the form and see if now this is working. So whenever we, uh, we click on here, you can see that it is going to ask us to provide the email and to provide the password. So whenever I provide the email like this one and I provide the password, you can see that it is going to work. But we have a slight problem. You can see that we are not getting the error message as expected. And we need to check where we made the mistake. That is not uh, allowing us to see the message for the password length. So I'm going to go back to my VS code and I'm going to go into the text input component and check for this particular uh, area. And you can see that I used this as a capital. I have to put this in small characters and I'm going to go back to the form. And whenever I say chris at gmail.com and I input the password and I try to input the, that one, you can see that it is going to complain until we meet the requirement like this one. All right. That was it for this video. I hope guys you liked it. Let me know in the comment if you met with any problem. I will be always there to help you. If you want the complete version of the code, you can visit our Patreon and help our channel to grow. You will, you will see there will be a lot of source code for different kind of projects that we previously made. And if you did like this video, please don't leave without pressing the like button. And again, if you want to continue to receive the Angular updates, the Angular videos like this one, make sure you hit that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on the bell icon notification so as to be able to get the notification whenever we upload a video thanks for watching and i will see you guys in the next one peace